The ravenous ghoul who haunts crypts and graveyards. I'm going to show you how to easy mini paint this thing here on Modeled. Hey everybody, uh, here is the box of ghouls from Pathfinder. You get two in the box. One is like a champion guy, and the other just a normal ghoul, same kind of uh, ghoul that you see in the Pathfinder 2e uh, monster manual, the bestery, the beastery. Uh, Ten dollars for these two models, so not too bad. Let's open it up and see what we got. Yeah, these always come with these flat bases, which I don't like. I don't use them at all, but they're good to use for counters. Okay, so. Sculpts on these things are, aren't too bad. I would say they're fair. They're not too great either. You can tell that the detail doesn't uh, pierce the model that, that deeply, so you would have to use thin paints for sure. Especially like I see on the head there. Overall, he looks pretty good. He's some sort of champion ghoul. Uh, the ghouls are level one in the book, but I guess you can make a ghoul out of anything. So, but the base ghoul is level one. Now, um, here we got to do uh, the mold lines. My worst thing that I hate. Now, this is zoomed in a lot, but uh, my eyes doing this themselves, I. It's very hard to see because I was thinking I, I might have chopped the top of the ear off there, but just be careful when you're doing this. A lot of times I'm lazy and just leave some of the mold lights and just take the bad ones out. But just be careful, but they, they can look bad, especially uh, certain ones if you don't take them out. So just try to scrape them off when you can. That one's pretty easy to take off. Okay, I'll just get out of this part. Let's get on to the next part. Enough with mold lines. Okay, now we're just going to put this ghoul champion aside because uh, he's got too much detail. We're just going to keep things simple because this is easy mini painting, right? So uh, I glued this, I crazy glued this to a Games Workshop 25mm base, as you can see. And we're going to use our two base colors, our Venetian Gray and our Templar, Temple Guard Blue. Gray is going to be for the cloak, and the blue is going to be for the skin, just like you see in the book. I'm going to paint them the same colors. So, as you can see, I used uh, I put my Games Workshop paints in those other bottles. I kind of like to use both, but uh, uh, if I'm just painting like a fine detail or something. I'll use the Game Workshop, Games Workshop bottles, but I don't like to use them because they drip and clog and they're just a pain in the butt. But they're good if you just want a couple bits of paint. Uh, but the other, the droppers are way better uh, for cleanliness and uh, if you want to paint a lot without leaving the pot open, drying it up. Okay, so we're just gonna, this gray is uh, already watered down a little bit. Not too much. And I'm just going to do uh, one coat here. It 
should always check your paints over time and maybe add a little water to them, stir them up. They've been sitting there for a while because it can dry out, especially the Games Workshop pots. So as I put this on, I'm not too worried about being neat because it's just the first, the very first coat. And so if I get some on the skin, that's okay. I'm not purposely going to try to do it, but I'm just not going to be careful. I'm just going to rush it. we got lots of time to be careful in the future. Oh, he's starting to come to life, this ghoul. Okay, let's get to the skin now. And, uh... Except the face, the detail's pretty fine. You want to kind of have like a little bit thinner paint than I was using here. And see how little blobby it is? You don't want it that blobby. But I think I smoothed that out. Yeah, I'll plug the eyes up a little bit there. See, this, uh, the way I'm zoomed in on the camera here is way closer than what my eyes can see. like that skin color. So now just get the leg going here. The leg kind of blends in with the cloak there. The robe. And he's got his, uh, he's got his little foot sticking out the other side. Don't forget about that. There's the base coat. Stun. Okay, now it's wash time, and I'm going to use a black null gloss, null oil. I'm just going to put this on the cloak to get in the, to get the crevices nice and uh, darker. And the gloss it just makes it like a slimy feel to it. Okay, now we're going to the blue wash. And we're just going to do the whole model. I'm using the Azureman Blue Wash from Games Workshop. I like wash. It's so nice and easy. And then uh, one more wash on the Coke. We're going to do the Druchi Violet Purple Wash. We're going to put that all over the robe and then I'm going to throw a couple patches on the skin. Just like a, maybe a patch here and there on the head and the arm. Not too much though. Just to create the effect, just like in the book. I want to get that robe layered like that. Now we're dry brushing. And I'm using that Tunisian Gray. I'm just uh, going over the robe. See how it's coming out now? Now I'm just going to give that a little coating. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a white to that gray. And just a lightly dust that. So now we're going to do a similar thing with the skin. I'm just going to dry brush some Temple Card Blue there, lighten that up. And the wash darkened it.
gonna add some white to that mix. Just lightly dust that, dust the skin. See how it just makes everything pop up. Now you could call this a day and paint that dagger silver and your model's done. And it'll look nice on the table. But if you got a steady hand and a small brush, continue with me and we're going to do the fine details. Here we got Screaming Skull. We're going to paint the skulls and the teeth on this ghoul. And we're going to use the tiny little brush that I got. You just get a little bit of paint on there and just be careful and take your time. Don't need to rush. Point is just a little pan at a time. And just a fine tip brush. You can use a bigger brush if you just put a little bit of paint on there. So I'm slowing it down so you can see exactly how I'm working with the fine detail. We're going to do the teeth. Sort of like aiming, just aim at the tooth, go and strike it. So that oh, almost done. Okay, now we're using the, the coal. Retribute armor. We're going to use this for the rope that ties this uh, rope together and attaches all the skulls and everything. You know, when you're painting rope, you want to use very little paint and you want to use the side of the brush. See how I made a mistake there? A little brushing or whatever I'm doing. I had too much paint on the brush. And that's what happens when you got too much paint on the brush. Very little paint, even dry brush if you want, but the important thing is to use the side of the brush when you're painting rope. You won't be able to do it with just painting straight on with the tip. You'll get it all over. Now, even though I made a mistake there, I could fix that up. No problem, right? Well, it's a problem, but I can fix it up. Just more work. So it's actually good I made that mistake there. So to fix it up, I'm just going to have to make a color that matches that robe and just paint over the cold. Don't forget the back. Okay, so now I mixed up a color to fix this gold. And it kind of looks a little not matching right here, but it, it does uh, work out in the end and it looks, you can't even notice it. The damn autofocus. See, I'm, uh, I'm distracted from this error that concentrating on filming it properly. So that's how you fix your mistakes. 
try to find a color that matches all that work you did and you, it'll just be disguised as like a, a highlight or a shadow you won't even be able to tell so now we're going to wash that we're going to use a, a brown wash from Games Workshop Agrax Earthshade you can use a black wash it's up to you I'm just decided to be different and uh, a brown wash like for skulls and that you could use uh, brown or black uh, for gold it's probably better to use a uh, brown wash so I figured just use everything brown make sure you put enough to get the uh, get the eyes all dark about getting a little bit of uh, that washing over the onto the robe as long as I don't do too much so now we're gonna dry brush with the original screaming skull color that's too big of a dry brush but it's I think the smallest one I got and look it's all rattled so it's too big to dry brush the teeth so with the teeth we're just going to layer we're just going to layer a bit of that screaming skull on the edge so I'll keep the dark and wash part of the tooth on the inside and then highlight the outside with just the outside tip with the white or the screaming skull and I could have used some of that screaming skull put on the skull t itself too to highlight that but I, I don't know why I just didn't, I just maybe didn't want to get too in depth but just dry brushing the skull is fine. And now we're going to do the dagger and we're going to do the handle gold and I should have did it, should have did it while I was doing the rope gold but I didn't at the time I didn't know what I was doing with the dagger so we're just gonna do that gold and, and the blades gonna be silver and then uh, I'm gonna wash that black dry brush it lighter silver and the gold I'm not gonna show that part it's the same thing Okay, now we're going to the eyes, and this is the final, final frontier of this model. And I, I got this uh, red wash contrast paint. It really, Blood Angels contrast red, really good for red wash. Because I couldn't find any dark red wash in their normal washes, so store that I go to Dan he told me to use this and it works great you see I just need one coat of this and this acts like a, a base and a wash all by itself so what you want to do is just put a little bit on that brush and then just get in that hole and get out you know what I mean just a little bit don't want to too much see you get got too little get to go again it's better to have too little than too much see how I flip the model around to access the other eye easily with my right hand instead of trying to do it awkwardly the other way I might hit the nose or something go for the base of the eyes but we still need to make them feel glowy get a glow to those eyes so for that we're going to use a layer 
It's like an orangey red. Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're going to use the same brush. And we're just going to get a little bit on there. On the tip of that thing. And what we want to do is we just want to lightly tap it in the center of the eye. You don't want to go in like you do with the, the dark red. You just want to tap it in there, just the tip of it. You don't want it, you, know, you don't want the whole brush sinking in there, or else it'll leave too much of a paint on there. You just tap the end of it, just hit it. Then you'll, you'll get that little dot, dot orange in there. There we go. There's a, the finished ghoul. I didn't do the base yet, and uh, I'm not going to show that, but uh, I'm going to show you stills at the end. Uh, overall, it's a fairly nice model. It looks really well uh, painted. I'm happy with it. These are only level 1 uh, creatures, but you'll need a bunch of them to fight, so I guess I'll have to paint a few more of these things, eh? Well, that's it, everybody. hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this is a new channel. I'm still trying to work out all the bugs and everything, um, but I'd appreciate it if you enjoyed the video to subscribe and hit the bell. Um, help me out to uh, get this channel going and I'm really enjoying this hobby I want to do this as a hobby and hopefully it works out okay so thank you everybody see you again